Hello everyone and welcome to a new season of Christian Emotional Recovery, the podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Leroy, and this is Christian Emotional Recovery. I also run the Christian Emotional Recovery Facebook group, so if you haven't, check that out, and I will put the link to it in the show notes. And also, if you haven't checked out the website, check out ChristianEmotionalRecovery.com, where you can get all of the podcast episodes. And keep in mind that this is also a podcast, and the podcast material is separate from what you get in the YouTube channel for the most part. So go to the show notes and you can see where you can also um, subscribe to the podcast and learn more about healing and recovery from a Christian perspective with a Christian theme in mind. Keep in mind too that this podcast and this YouTube channel are where faith meets science. So I believe in therapy, I believe in science, and I believe in using those gifts that God gave us to help us to heal trauma from the root of where the body stores trauma because that's how we heal our bodies of trauma at the end of the day. So keep in mind that that's what this podcast and that this, what this YouTube channel believes in and stands for. So um, everyone's welcome here. Um, It is Christian emotional recovery, but you don't have to be a Christian to benefit from the message here. And it's not one that's heavy with the religious element, but I do want a place where Christians can go because a lot of Christians have faced Um, condemnation and gaslighting, unfortunately, from sometimes well-meaning and sometimes not well-meaning people within the Christian community. And I got tired of that. So I wanted to create a place where you could be safe and you know that we will help you to heal and that you know you're doing the best you can. And if you're doing the healing work and you're not healing, it's not your fault. And if you experience trauma, it's not your fault. I'm here to help you to find solutions that actually work on healing trauma. If you you have tried praying and you have tried reading scriptures and you have gone to church and done all the traditional things and somebody tells you, oh, well, maybe you're living in sin and you have examined your life and you can't find anything. None of us is perfect. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. But if you're living the best life you know how and you're trying to heal and you can't, There is nothing wrong with you. You are not deficient. You're not doing anything wrong. And the people telling you you don't have enough faith, you don't spend enough time praying, you um, have done something wrong to deserve this, that is absolutely the most insane, unhealthy, and toxic thing a person can tell you if you've examined your heart and you're doing the best you can and you're trying to do the healing work and you're doing, getting nowhere. I spent 20 years of my life in the same position feeling like there was something wrong with me, and what I was not doing was I was not targeting the trauma. I didn't even really know what trauma was. I'd heard the word a few times, but one day I listened to a book called Healing from Hidden Abuse, and alarm bells went off in my head. I was like, oh my gosh, this is me. And I realized that it was trauma stuck in my body that had kept me from healing, and that I was told my whole life, no, you weren't abused. No, you weren't hit. No, um, you never were starved. You always had your basic needs met. No, there's no way that anybody could have done anything to you that caused trauma. And what the fact is, was that wasn't true. And so I had to start accepting what was in front of my face. And one of the difficult things about healing trauma is that sometimes you will see things that you don't want to see. And it will be things you've examined your heart and your life for everything. You've turned everything upside down a hundred times. But one day you just see it. I don't know why it works that way. You try and you try and you try and you try to get to the root of it. But one day it just hits you like bam. And you're like at the entrance at the beginning of a precipice. And you're like, do I want to do this? You know you're going to see things you can't unsee. You're going to see things about people you love you can't unsee. You're going to know things that you can't unknow. And it will alienate you and isolate you from certain people who maybe have done you harm, whether they've meant to or not. And it is something that once you see it, you can't unsee it. And sometimes it's a lonely journey. And I've even asked myself, is it worth it? Is all of this worth it? And the answer is, is I can't tell you if it's worth it. I think it is worth it. 
I do believe it is worth it. But there are days that I question this healing journey because I, like I said, have seen things I can't unsee. And this has been the loneliest I've ever been in my life. I don't have a lot of close family and friends that I can confide in and truly trust anymore because I have to be safe and I have to be careful now. And it's it's difficult. But I know that God is with me on the journey and I know that it's worth it because I'm doing the healing work and I'm living the life that God intended for me to live. And I'm in a wilderness middle ground right now where I'm healing. And healing is something you do. It's a lifetime process you do for the rest of your life. And it's something you need to do daily and or weekly. If you don't keep at it, it's hard work. You chip away at this hard rock and it's hard. I mean, I keep saying that, but it is. It's not easy. I don't mince words for people at the podcast. I don't sugarcoat. I say what happened to you was unfair. What happened to you sucked. What happened to you was not your fault. But you are still the person, that the only person that can do the healing work. And it sucks. And it's unfair. But that's the reality. And if you're going to heal, you're going to face things you don't want to see. And you're going to deal with things you don't want to deal with. And you're going to have relationships that possibly end because you can't unsee certain things. Or you go to those people and you just never see them the same way again. And it's not that you can't find forgiveness and in some cases reconciliation if that's the right thing to do. But it's something where you change and you never go back. There's no going back. And that's the reality of it. And I know that's difficult to hear. And I know that that's not necessarily what you want to hear, but it's the truth. When I teach stuff, I try to teach certain things. This is my experience. And then having been in dozens of support groups for my own support, having run a Facebook group that is a support group for two years now, and having done so much research and read so many articles and learned so much and taken so many courses that... I could literally have a PhD in psychology. I don't, and this is not a substitute for therapy, but it gives you another perspective. I can tell you that everything that I've just told you is the journey that every person who has been on this healing journey goes through. Those things are universal. There's a lot of things where I'll say, use your own discernment, examine your heart, pray to God. And if somebody comes to a different conclusion than you about what kinds of modalities they should be using, don't condemn that person and tell them they shouldn't do it because you are convicted that you shouldn't do it. Maybe you shouldn't do yoga, but maybe somebody else can, or maybe they don't have an issue with it, or it's not an issue for them. I'm not talking about totally woo-woo stuff, but I'm talking about some of these gray areas where we need to give ourselves a little leeway and give each other a little bit of blessing and trust God to know what he's doing in somebody else's life instead of telling them what they should do in their life. Now, there's obviously right and wrong, and I understand that in our society, the right and wrong stuff is becoming grayer and grayer, and that's wrong, and I'll just say it. It's wrong. I'm not going to be specific here, but yeah. Um, however, there's a lot of things where we do need to live and let live, and we do need to just let people live their lives, and we do need to just love them and let God sort them out. At the end of the day, it's not our job to tell somebody, oh, well, I don't think you should be doing meditation. Well, meditation, I'll tell you from my experience, this is me, not you. You do what God, you feel like God is telling you to do. If it weren't for meditation, I would be lying six feet under in a grave, dead. And that's not an exaggeration. I don't believe in trigger warnings per se on my podcast or on my YouTube channel, but I also try to put something out there. I'm going to talk about suicide a little bit. So if that's not your thing, you can turn it off or move past this. But if it wasn't for um, meditation, if it wasn't for some of these, what a lot of Christians would call unorthodox modalities, I would be dead. If I had not gone to a therapist, I would be dead. If I had gone to a very, shall we, shall we say, strict, restrictive, controlling type pastoral counselor who told me I had to check these boxes and I couldn't do A, B, and C because according to a lot of very conventional and fundamentalist doctrines, you can't do A, B, and C, I would be dead. And I'm not being dramatic. I'm not telling people what they should do, but I'm telling you what my experience is. And everybody's different too. Maybe meditation doesn't work for you. Maybe you don't do yoga because of 
you have your own reasons. Nobody's saying you have to do any of these modalities. All I'm saying is that you give yourself and other people the grace to pray, to read scriptures, and to follow their discernment, and to realize that not everybody's going to come to the same conclusions. Otherwise, why would there be a thousand or so denominations in the Christian religion, and that's just modern American and maybe European Christianity? That doesn't even count Coptic Christianity and Eastern um orthodoxy or roman catholicism well that is a denomination within you get the idea though there is just so much diversity and we have to keep an open mind and that's just my opinion i don't think that everything should just go off the deep end i'm not saying anything goes there's obviously you need to have some guardrails there but some for some people those guardrails may be a little bit further out and for other people maybe they need to be further in and maybe yours just depends on the circumstances. It's contextual and it's complex. And all I'm saying is whatever practices you do, the realities of healing from trauma, and if you've suffered or experienced um, any kind of narcissistic abuse, any kind of extended gaslighting and manipulation, any kind of emotional abuse, any kind of childhood emotional neglect or emotional abuse, then you know what I'm talking about. And if you're on that journey and you haven't hit that precipice yet, you will. And that's scary. It's scary. You, But you will hit that precipice. And you'll have to make a decision about whether or not you're going to go over it into, into the uncertainty of this journey. Or if you're going to stay in where you're at and never move forward in a way that God intends for you to. Now, I'm not judging anybody. I'm not trying to be manipulative when I say that. I do believe that there comes a time where, like the Robert Frost poem, we face a fork in the road. And the path less followed is actually the one that's well worth it. If you haven't read that Robert Frost poem, um, I think it's called Two Roads. But I will post the Robert Frost poem in the show notes for this as well. And I encourage you to read it and think about how it might be on your healing journey, how that poem might um, give you some perspective on things because I'm a person that I'll be blunt. I don't believe in sola scriptura. I believe that scripture guides our way. It's our primary um, guide in this life, but I also believe in consulting um, philosophy and poetry and literature and art and music and um, psychology and science to give us perspective as well. And I believe that when you do that in a broad context and you read scripture in the context of all of that, you get more perspective, you get more accurate context of what you're reading in the Bible, you get more to relate to what you're reading in the Bible, you get more perspective in general based on your own experience so that you're not limiting yourself in terms of having wisdom and having perspective that can help guide you along the way. But check out that poem. The Robert Frost poem is really good. And um, I actually wrote a poem that was um, inspired by it when I did my um, thesis, my MFA thesis in creative writing. So check out that poem and um, I think it might provide some guidance in terms of when you face that fork in the road, what do you do? And there isn't one right answer necessarily, but the, taking the risk, going over the cliff, of course, I'm assuming you know that that's a metaphor, okay? Um, but going into that uncertainty is scary as hell. It's so scary and it's so worth it because you finally become the person that you were meant to be. You finally are true to yourself. You finally become the person that God meant for you to be. You finally know when to speak up when people have silenced you and tried to keep you small and silent and invisible. You finally also know when to, as Lisa Romano says, zip, shutty, shutty, and just sit back and observe when people sometimes say and do things around you that are just, it's like you're aware of what people do, where in the past it, you were sort of, you were unconscious of that's harmful. You don't say that. You don't do that. And you, it doesn't necessarily mean you retort or you argue back. Sometimes just sitting back and observing and being like, mm-hmm, not in a condescending way, but like, I will be in a group of people where I was unaware of what the harm that was going on, the dysfunction that was going on, or maybe I was aware of it on a certain level, and I'll go back into that group and I'll just sit back and listen 
and somebody will do or say something and I just keep my mouth shut. I just sit back and I observe and I'm aware of it. And I realize I don't have to defend myself. I don't have to say anything back to them. I don't have to argue with them. I'm not gonna waste my time. It's not that the people are beneath me. It's just that I know who I am and I don't have to waste my time and energy trying to make them see something they'll never see. They won't change in many cases. There are people you can talk to and tell them if they're causing harm or if something's hurtful and they will listen. But you learn over time, the hard way and the painful way, that some people, no matter how much you want them to change, they will never change, ever. And that's okay. It sucks, it's painful, it's a harsh, one of those harsh realities realities of things you can't unsee, especially if you spent your whole life around somebody and you think that they love you and have your best interest at heart and you realize that deep down, maybe on the surface they do, but deep down they don't. They don't. That is like, ouch. I spent days in the bed crying when I realized some of that and I just let all that toxic energy just wash out of me and it hurt and it felt bad and I still struggle with it some but there is acceptance and there is peace on the other side of that and then there's the decision of what do I do with this relationship do I keep my distance a little bit and cut contact a little bit but I continue to have a relationship with this person totally depends on the degree to which they're problematic and or abusive it also depends on what role they play in your life and it also depends on what you're willing to put up with you have to pray about that and read scripture and use discernment with that just like anything else so do you go no contact do you continue to just do these interactions with them but you do it where you're more aware and where if something starts to go downhill you walk out of the room or you leave or you know you make an excuse and say well i've got this appointment i forgot about or something to get yourself out of that situation which by the way is okay if it's going to keep you from somebody doing something terrible to you obviously you've got to protect yourself and set boundaries yes it's okay to set boundaries so the whole point of this was i started somewhere and i was going to talk about one thing and this just came out of me and this is what god put on my heart but the whole point of this is that the nature of healing trauma is difficult and it's painful and there are things you can never unsee and it can be a lonely road and you have to do the work every day and it's worth it in my opinion it is totally worth it because you on the other side of that can have the life that you always wanted but you never thought you could and i used to think i never could after trying for so long and nothing really changed i never thought i would have that life and i'm still working towards that life it's not fully here yet but i believe with all of my heart that it is possible and that i can do that and there's going to be some more precipices precipi that i'm gonna have to face and make a decision and and take a, a a metaphorical leap um into the uncertainty of things because that's gonna be what it requires in order to live that life but it's to i can't say that your life won't get better if you don't make any major changes in your life externally in your relationships but in many cases that's the only way and that's a harsh thing to realize it hurts it hurts I know so just know that you're not alone know there's a lot of people going through this with you know that there's an increasing community of Christian people that realize that we can't keep preaching for women or men to stay in abusive marriages and that that's okay because it's not and know that there are truths that you can't unsee if you go on this journey and that sometimes they're harsh but at the other end of those there's peace and there's truth and the Bible says the truth you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. There's another saying where I hope you will forgive me for using some bad language, but um, the truth will piss you off and then the truth will give you peace. And that's true too. It will make you so mad and upset you. You've got to let that stuff out in a safe and healthy context and journal about it, cry, talk to a therapist, talk to a friend, whatever you've got to do, do ugly tears. It's okay, that's part of the process. But it will make you mad, it will piss you off, but then it will set you free and it will give you peace. 
And it's not like a one-off kind of thing, but it's more like cycles. And there is like an overall one too, if that makes sense. So stay on the journey. Don't give up. Know that you are fearfully and wonderfully made, that God loves you, that there is a life on the other side of all of this that is possible for you if you are willing to do the work and to make the leaps of faith. You will get there just a little bit at a time. You don't do it all at once, just a little bit at a time, and you will get there. And keep in mind, um, check out the Patreon account if you want to support this ministry, if you want to support this work that I'm doing to help other trauma survivors. Check out the um, ChristianEmotionalRecovery.com. All of this will be in the show notes. If you would like guidance on your writing, go to RachelLeroy.podia, that's P-O-D-I-A dot com, and check out my website. I also have put the Christian Emotional Recovery store there, so check out RachelLeroy.podia.com, and you can get the meditations. They are the... Um, the um, ACORN, which is an acronym for Dealing With and Healing Difficult Emotions. Check out that, and you can buy the whole um, four versions of it for $12, and you're also supporting what I do if you purchase that as well. Um, but check out the YouTube channel, check out the podcast, check out the Facebook group, check out the website, check out a Patreon account, and check out the um, website that also has the store on it as well. Thank you so much. God bless you. Have a great day, and remember you are fearfully and wonderfully made.